and welcome to PFF Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ian Harditz, and today we continue our Fantasy File series with a look at rising second-year Chiefs running back Clyde edwards Lair. You were probably not too pleased if you had him on your fantasy team last year. Nobody really rose quicker from the pre-draft, the post-draft uh, process, just in those kind of processes, excuse me, uh, then Clyde edwards Lair because you get him on the Chiefs, the single most fantasy-friendly backfield, so we thought going to last year, and then for Damian Williams to opt out because of COVID, it was just the perfect storm, and honestly, it still looked that way for a good chunk of the season, that week one game against the Texans, go for 138 yards and a touchdown, you know, no targets, we all kind of, or excuse me, no catches, we all kind of freak out about that, turns around, catches that least five balls the next two weeks so I understand though did not work out as the RB5 unbelievable to go back to that but he was being drafted as the RB5 at the height of the madness per fantasy football calculator he did not return that value but I do think people are overstating how bad he was just because he didn't return uh, top five value. I mean, he had 1,100 total yards from scrimmage and five trips to the end zone in basically 12 and a half games. And before you come at me about the goal line stuff, people, calm down. Go back and watch those carries yourself or just take my word for it. Short of being like prime Reggie Bush on a good chunk of these, nobody was going to score the, the the touchdowns there like come on if we had evidence of his teammates being a ton better in the same situations maybe I'd be more willing to you know put some stock in the fact that we you know we, we don't think he can be this short yardage guy but overall CH scored on two of his 10 carries inside the five yard lines Daryl Williams Le'Veon Bell Darwin Thompson DeAndre Washington they went one for six so the other running backs on the Chiefs if you want to go on these really bad sample sizes these small ones that people are using for CH you should also point out that his teammates weren't any good in the exact same situations. It's like when people hate on Mike Davis for averaging fewer than four yards uh, per carry last season. Christian McCaffrey averaged fewer yards per carry than Mike Davis. Obviously, McCaffrey is the better running back. Obviously, uh, CEH isn't an awful goal line back. Like, it's fine, people. Go back and look at what he did at Alabama and look what he just did as a pure rusher between the 20 yard lines or between the five yard lines. If you want to, you know, again, be as specific as possible with how you want to slander this guy, but overall PFF rushing grade 76, that was number 18 among 47 qualified backs above average. He was actually tied for 14th and missed tackles force per rush, uh, tied for 19th in yards after contact per carry tied for 25th and overall yards per carry. As much as having Patrick Mahomes, Tyree kill Travis Kelsey can help take the attention off you. Let's face it. This offensive line really hasn't been all that good in recent years overall they've been outside the top 16 in yards before contact per rush over the past two years and honestly for Clyde like the bigger issue for him was just volume it wasn't efficiency we saw him work well as a pass catcher too he caught 36 of 50 targets 297 yards and a touchdown and when you watch the games like okay a lot of that was screens and shorter stuff but he did show the ability to go downfield and went as well on some of those broken plays or just straight up wheel routes out of the backfield I mean what he did in that Ravens game just kind of exploiting uh, them not paying as much attention to him as they should uh, it's unfortunate we didn't get to see him continue to kind of dive into that aspect of his game more throughout the season and now you know for just the elephant in the room Le'Veon Bell really stunted what was going to be a great year for him. I mean, again, we had that great week one game against the Texans. He catches six and five passes the next two weeks. Uh, you know, he has kind of a down games against the Patriots and Raiders. And then he went for, you know, 169 total yards against the Bills. Were there, you know, were there zero touchdowns scored between weeks two and six? Yes. And I get it. Like the goal line issues weren't great, but they impacted everybody. And look, like Kareem Hunt, the amount of touchdowns he put up here, you don't see featured running backs around the league scoring only five or six touchdowns. And when you do, it usually positively regresses the next season. So the fact that this offense last year was their usual top five scoring selves, excuse me, they were number six, actually, my bad, 29.6 uh, points per game. Like, we want running backs and top scoring offenses. That's what Clyde Edwards Alaire still is. It's unfortunate it didn't work out last year, but we can't let yesterday's mistake influence tomorrow's uh, you know, fantasy football decisions. So uh, I'm sure that quote's used a lot more in a lot more important contexts uh, in life. But in this one, uh, you know, we're talking fantasy. So I just, you know, really my main point from all this, like Clyde Edwards Alaire was not nearly as bad as you thought he was. His situation, when we want to look at the offensive line, wasn't quite as clean, I think, uh, as a lot thought and just the fact that Le'Veon did come in 
and make things more difficult obviously didn't help as well. But throughout it all, Clyde was, you know, making plays, making dudes miss. No fumbles all season. I mean, I thought that part was pretty impressive for a smaller guy where people were kind of wondering if he could almost uh, handle the load of the NFL. But honestly, like, Le'Veon coming in the picture, it didn't, obviously it didn't help things, but it wasn't as bad as people, I think, make it out to be in hindsight. Like, Clyde played over 60% of the offensive snaps in each of the first six games. When Le'Veon came, and he went down to 53%. 50%, 40%, 51%, 59%. Really, like when his touches went down, it wasn't even because Le'Veon was necessarily taking him completely off the field. It was more like Le'Veon was almost getting in the way of Daryl Williams' pass game work. The issue was that Le'Veon made this a three-back committee instead of a two. Clyde remained the lead back of the committee the entire way. He started every single game for the Chiefs. And after that first three-game stretch with Le'Veon, where we had kind of a fluky game against the Broncos, where the Chiefs scored 43 points, even though they like did not need to put their uh, foot on the gas at all. That's what happens when you get a bad Drew Locke game. Uh, then we had the Jets blowout, where it was kind of a revenge game for Le'Veon. If you're ever going to give that guy a bunch of chances, it would be that one. And then finally, another just weird Panthers game, where we didn't see them kind of rack up the usual play volume. After that, I mean, he was back to getting 15 touches. He had 12 touches. Then he had uh, 21 and then uh, 15 before he got hurt again. So, you know, Le'Veon kind of brought Clyde down from being this like flirting with 20 touches to more of a 15 touch guy more weeks than not. It was just that annoying stomach flu in week 13 where we knew he was going to be active, but then he ended up not playing. And then ultimately, you know, kind of like the weird hip ankle foot injury thing, just the bad injury he got in that Saints game uh, helped him just, I'm mean, excuse me, did the opposite. It helped him, but forced him uh, to take on a lesser role in the playoffs when he did finally return. So Claude Uber Solaire, again, not as bad as he thought he was last year. The issue was more volume. Uh, than efficiency and people the volume should be there because look at what the Chiefs did they did not bring back Le'Veon Bell they re-signed Daryl Williams because Williams is fine and he's not you know an, an expensive guy that other teams were going to be going off and getting but Clyde edwards Lair is once again cemented as Andy Reid's undisputed RB1 and people it's been fantastic for fantasy business over the past 20 years first uh, Andy Reid running back since he's been calling plays uh, since 1999 Deuce Staley with the Eagles he never ranked lower than RB15 in PP PR points per game over the next four years. Brian Westbrook ripped off uh, from 2003 to 2009. Let's see, he was the RB19, RB5, RB7, RB4, RB1, RB1, and then fell down to RB36 in his last year. Shady McCoy had three top eight finishes. Jamal Charles had three top eight finishes. Kareem Hunt had two top eight finishes. The worst two years, two of the worst three years, excuse me, for Andy Reid running backs have been Damian Williams as the RB25 in PPR points per game in 2019 and Clyde as the RB21 last season. So have you know, has having Patrick Mahomes under center caused Andy Reid's running back to not be as fantasy friendly? I don't know. Wasn't hurting Kareem Hunt during the first, you know, 10 games of 2018 when he was just uh, balling out over everyone. I think what we've seen is Damian Williams playing hurt for a lot of 2019. The reason why his PPR points are lower is because he was a lot of those games. He just wasn't even playing much. Once he got into playoffs, they featured him. Obviously good real life decision making by the Chiefs, but didn't exactly help in fantasy land. And then all the issues we just talked about with Clyde Edwards-Alaire uh, in terms of, you know, just his lack of volume for large portions of the season and then unfortunate stomach flu and injuries to end the year. So, look, Andy Reid, fancy RBs have always been fantastic, and now we're finally getting the guy at a discount. So, takes us right into our PFF Lily CEH stat. Guys, the volume was the least of our concerns for the first part of the season, and people are just forgetting it. Only Joe Mixon, Ezekiel Elliott, and Derrick Henry have more touches than Clyde edwards alaire before the Chiefs signed Le'Veon Bell. And again, I get it that bringing in Bell... That's bad. It means they didn't love what Clyde was doing enough in those first six games, so they brought in Bell. But for them not to add any sort of meaningful resource in this unit throughout the entire offseason, with all due respect to former Jets running back Eli McGuire, as well as ex-Vikings 49ers scat back Jarek McKinnon, like it's, it's Clyde Edwards' hilarious season, everybody, and he's going to be at worst, like look at last year. That was worst case, and he was still the RB21 in PPR points per game, and that's even got a little impacted by him you know, getting hurt in that uh, Saints game at the end of the year. So I really think that, you know, CEH is almost being unfairly dinged down draft boards because he didn't fulfill top five production last year. Guess what? Only five running backs fulfilled that prophecy from a season ago. Jarek McKinnon, you know, he's more of, he is like, 
Again, Le'Veon was more of an issue to Daryl Williams than Clyde, and Jarek has nowhere near Le'Veon's uh, history of being an early down guy. So Clyde is going to continue to seep up all the early down work, and it would make sense in year two with an extra year, you know, learn the pass blocking nuances and, you know, being just that much more comfortable with Patrick Mahomes. It makes sense if Clyde's uh, receiving game expands. So 54 targets in 12 and a half games last year was already solid enough. I mean, just with better health, he could be flirting with that 75 target mark. And if they really decide to start featuring him like they have in the past with Kareem Hunt, I mean, triple digit targets aren't out of the realm of imagination for Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I hope our social team doesn't pull that quote and post it out there because I do not think he'll get triple digit targets. Let me make that very clear. But if he takes over the backfield, as we've seen Kareem Hunt do in the past, as we've seen Damian Williams do, as Jamal Charles did for years in these Chiefs uh, Andy Reid offenses, if he gets that role, people, he's going to be having over 300 combined carries and targets. And that's exactly what we're looking for in fantasy, particularly when it's tied to one of the best offenses. So with all that said, Clyde edwards Lair is my RB15 at the moment. Before you say, Ian, you're too high or too low on him, he's priced as the RB15 at Underdog Fantasy. So I'm in line with you all, with the public right now. I have him in the same tier as the other year two running backs that were really high on, Antonio Gibson, Cam Akers, Jonathan Taylor. I named a tier. With some luck, these dudes could bounce up two tiers. And that's exactly uh, kind of the ceiling we're chasing with CEH. I mean, we are looking at potentially Andy Reid's undisputed RB1. More likely, Daryl Williams kind of stays the two-minute back. We don't see Clyde, you know, get those 80 to 100 targets we would really love to see. And, uh, you know, the touches are, you know, more around 250 than 300. But even then, people, we're getting a guy now at being priced closer to his floor than his ceiling. And that's the main point. Because, again, I don't have uh, CEH ranked super higher than... He's public. Yeah, I don't have him ranked higher than the public at all. So I'm not knocking down saying, you know, you need to take him in every single round too. But at value, I love drafting him here. Again, anytime we can draft someone closer to their floor than their ceiling, it's a good move. And based on the running backs that were top 24 in last year's ADP, we've only had four guys fall at least double digit spots. Kenyon Drake, James Conner, Mark Ingram all make sense. They're all in new offenses and like, okay, I don't want James Conner as likely Chase Edmonds backup. Kenyon Drake is Josh Jacobs backup. Mark Ingram and God knows what's going on in Houston right now. CEH though has dropped 13 spots. Like, okay, underdog ADP is uh, RB15 over at Fantasy Calculator. He's at RB18. So in that lower RB2 range, man, sign me up for Clyde edwards alaire eight days of the week. Again, it's been rare over the years for us to be able to get the Chiefs RB1 at this steep of a discount. The fact the Chiefs have not addressed the room anymore throughout the throughout this offseason is the biggest, you know, just Sigh of relief for Clyde edwards Alaire's fancy managers that I could have asked for. So don't be afraid to get Clyde at a far more reasonable price than he was last year. Uh, at the end of the day, we want players attached to great offenses, and that is exactly what Clyde is entering 2021. If you want more uh, information on the Chiefs and the rest of the NFL, please check out PFS Podcast Network, which covers everything NFL college and fantasy football. You can recap the NFL draft and look forward to 2022 with Mike Renner and Austin Gale's two-for-one drafts podcast or get all the 2021 betting content you need with the PFF forecast and people. I love betting. You love betting. But we also love fantasy football. That's why we're here. Go play best ball over at Underdog Fantasy. If you like fantasy football and if you like playing fantasy for money, you need to check out Underdog Fantasy. Underdog's got everything, including season-long and playoff best ball. Best ball is a season-long game where you draft a team like you normally do. That's it. There's no in-season roster management. Underdog automatically selects your best performers each week, saving you loads of time. So go to Underdog Fantasy and deposit $10 using promo code PFF and get a free PFF Edge and subscription. That's promo code PFF. Draft now at Underdog Fantasy fancy that's gonna do it everybody thank you as always for tuning in to pff fantasy football podcast if you enjoy these fantasy files episodes i encourage you to check out my 100 article in 100 day series over at pff.com that's where i'm getting my most of my thoughts for this podcast in that article and i do love the way that writing forces you to more clearly rationalize your thoughts so i don't go on you know some tangents that we kind of save uh for this medium here known as the podcast so thank you again for tuning in people i'm ian hart and until next time take care everybody Thank you.